guys, welcome to my kitchen. Obviously, another big, exciting day in my kitchen. What are we making? Where are we going? We're going to go to southern Italy today. And really, anything below Rome, you start to come into that southern aspect, and it tends to be a little bit more rustic, it tends to be a little bit more rural, not as uh, fancy, a lot less French influence in the cooking. So what you'll find is things tend to be a little bit more farm to table, if you will, or rustic in presentation. So what we're going to make today is a tomato and cheese pie. Now what we're really going to make is a galette in Italiano or galette in the French. All right, so let's go over ingredients and let me walk you through. So the first thing we want to make here is the, is the pie crust or that pastry crust. In this case, it's going to be more of a, of a pie. It's going to feel more of a, like a pie crust. And that's simple, guys. What do we need? We need flour, and we're going to use one and a quarter cups of flour. Now, I like a pastry flour. I like a pr low protein flour. So you guys can use a pastry flour, a cake flour works great. Um, certainly an all-purpose flour would be totally fine with this. I like unenriched, unbleached. So I just like that flavor of the wheat flour. Second thing we're going to need is we're going to need some butter. So we're going to use just shy of a stick of butter. We're going to use about seven tablespoons of butter and we're going to use about seven tablespoons of ice cold water. And then we're going to use a pinch of salt. Now what kind of salt are we going to use? In this cool, this olive wood bowl. So cool with that live edge. I love that. So we're going to use pink Himalayan. I usually use a flaky sea salt from Sicily or a pink Himalayan or a gray sea salt from France. But lately I've been doing pink Himalayan. It's, it's briny, earthy, sexy, no doubt about it. Pink sexy, guys. Now that's going to be our ingredients for the pie crust. And I'll show you how to do that. It's easy. It's fun. Now we're going to go through ingredients. Now, like I said earlier, we can use whatever you want. And the quantity here is not critical. I mean, typically in Puglia, for example, you're going to be grabbing whatever you got out of the garden. You're going to be grabbing whatever you got is fresh, whatever's left over. So you can really put anything in this. But what I'm sharing with you is a really delicious combination of cheeses. So we're going to have here about six to seven medium to small size tomatoes. And then we're going to have one clove of garlic. Oh, garlic. I just love garlic. It's so Italian. It's so rustic. It's very, you know, it's got that earthy feel, just so delicious. Now we want to add some cheeses. We want cream. We want a little bit of that tang. I like that gooey chew that you get with a cheese, which is great. Oh, this is one of my favorites. This is a Fontina cheese. I love Fontina. It's great in savory dishes, and it's great in sweet dishes. It goes great with apricots, which is delicious. So we got four ounces of a Fontina cheese. And now here I've got a ricotta cheese. And I like a whole milk. Don't skimp on the fat. And I want about four ounces, which is going to be a, almost about a half a cup. The aroma is just filled mm, with the cream. So delicious. And it's a soft fermented cheese, which I like. And it's very smooth. And you're going to get that fine, coarse ricotta cheese. And here we're going to use a half of a cup of a fine, coarse ricotta cheese. Next, we're going to go still more Italiano, right? Mmm. Mmm. Man, that is good. Mascarpone cheese. This is almost like a soft brie. It's, it's almost like a, a New York cream cheese. And same thing here. We're going to do a half of a cup of a mascarpone cheese. Couple more things. Nutmeg, which is what we're using today. Oh, nutmeg is, uh, anybody that watches our videos, so delicious. So we're going to use just, just a little bit. I always call it a breath. Not, not even a measurement, really. Just a little breath of nutmeg, and that'll marry in the flavors. It brings you that backdrop of rustic, earthy uh, uh, spice. Very delicious. Next, we're going to use fresh ground pepper. So when possible, always go fresh ground. And last but not least, we're going to need some olive oil. Now, I'm thinking I want Italian olive oil for an Italian dish. I want extra virgin. Gives it the most flavor, more robust. Earthy, grassy, peppery, hmm, where would I go? Guys, anyone new to our channel, I own a farm in Italy. It's just above the heel, and I named the company after my two boys, Vito and Joe. We co-op with a whole group of farms in that region to bring you some of the best extra virgin Italian olive oil you're ever going to have. And you can just click the link above or below, and we'll drop ship it right to your house. And, you know, I think of that as like a taking a trip literally taking a trip to Italy right in a bottle because it comes right from the hills of Italy. Okay, guys, ingredients are set. Let's start making that pie crust. A couple of tips on this. I don't want to work the crust a lot, and I want 
little globules of butter within the crust that's going to make it flaky and it's going to make it crumbly it's going to make it fall apart it's going to make it really delicious so i'm going to take my butter which is really cold just you can put it in the freezer for a little bit which is what i like to do and then i'm going to cut it into those seven little cubes they're cutting little cubes i'm going to set that right up front next i'm going to add my flour to the bowl i'm going to add a pinch of my pink himalayan if you're using salted butter which is fine don't add any salt until you taste it. Now I'm gonna add my cubes of butter. Now I'm gonna take my whisk. Now I just use a whisk. You can use a uh, pastry cutter. Gently what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stir the flour to get all the butter covered first. And then I just take the whisk and I start pushing it through. Now I just push it off with a wooden spatula and then just do it again. And I just do this here for maybe two, three minutes. Guys, it's been about three minutes and I'm all set. I just keep slowly cutting the butter with the whisk. And you see how it's like a cornmeal consistency? That's absolutely perfect. Play a little Sinatra. Now I'm gonna need seven tablespoons of ice cold water. I love these measuring spoons from William Sonoma, man, they are awesome. So just bring that over to the side. I've got some ice and water mixed together and then I'm just gonna slowly put my seven tablespoons and then real slowly do a mix and our goal here is to see it all kind of come together you might need to add a little bit more water you never really know but start off with the seven first and see where you're at so this is going to need maybe one more tablespoon of water and now what i'm going to do is just take my wooden spatula scrape the sides and then just break it apart for a minute almost kneading it. We want it just beyond the crumble. See how it's just coming together right now? And now real simple, I'm gonna take a piece of plastic wrap and then just put the dough right in the middle of it and then just bring it all together in your wrap. And I haven't even touched the dough with my hands, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is just push it together and make a nice flat disc. Now guys, we wanna rest this and let it hydrate. So we're gonna put it in the refrigerator I'll tell you, ideally two hours would be great for this. Okay, it's been three hours, so the easy play here is you're gonna get some parchment paper. I'm gonna put that right down on my work surface. Now to help roll this out, I'm gonna use a rolling pin. I'm gonna use, this is called a French rolling pin. See how it's wider in the middle? That way you don't get the thick part of the dough and it humps, you can thin it out. This is such a phenomenal idea. I truly don't believe that it was invented by the French. I think an Italian guy actually invented it and probably moved to France. It's just too good of an idea for the French to come up with. That's what I'm saying, I'm just saying. Settle down, I'm just kidding, okay? Settle down. You see the chunks of butter in there? Oh, that's so good. So just take your time, roll it out. So I'm gonna take just a little flour, just cause it's starting to stick a little, put it off to the side there. Just as little as you can, don't use a lot. And then just make a nice big round disc. Okay guys, we're good to go. Now let's start putting this together. First thing I wanna do is spread out my mascarpone cheese. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that right in the middle. And you wanna get it out, you know, within reason, nice thin layer over the bottom of your pie here. We're gonna be folding the crust over, so you wanna get it up to about that area. I let the mascarpone cheese out just a little bit, just so it softens. And we're not looking for perfection, because like I said, it's just kind of a rustic feel. Next thing I wanna do, I wanna get that garlic on there. So I've got my garlic peeled, right? Oh, the aroma is so good. And then just real light, guys. We we'll probably won't even use the whole clove. I'm just gonna go a little bit right on the top. Beautiful, and then with my spreader, I'm just gonna take the garlic and just spread it right across the top. Next, I'm gonna take some fresh ground pepper and really light sprinkle. Next, I'm gonna do my ricotta cheese here. And same thing, just give it a nice gentle spread. Same thing, I'm gonna take my garlic and then just spread it across. You know, there's people, believe it or not, in this world that don't like garlic. And that's cool, we all got our faults, but I, I don't hang out with people that don't like garlic. I mean, if you come over to my house and say, you know, I like the smell of garlic or your hands smell like garlic. Why are you hanging out with that person? That's my question. My attitude is, hey, this ain't gonna work out. Same thing now, we're gonna use a little pepper, real light. Only on this layer, I use the nutmeg. So I've got a nutmeg, and again, I'm gonna go real light on my nutmeg. Just a breath, almost like the pepper. Now I want that fontina cheese, and I wanna slice it nice and thin if possible, like I'm doing a thin sheet, and then I'm just gonna put it across. Beautiful. Guys, I've got the tomatoes all spread. Absolutely looks perfect. Now what I wanna do is dry my hands really well. And then again, this is rustic. So just pull your dough up off. And we're just coming up the, to the tomato. So you're just gonna push it up and then fold in the side, just like this. Work your way around the parchment. Fold it in nice. That's gonna keep everything in, keep your liquids in. Oh, that's beautiful. 
and then every inch or so, just fold it in, beautiful. Another ingredient you guys want to have, and I forgot to tell you this at the beginning, is an egg. We just want to do a quick egg wash on the side for the crust. So just take a whole egg, give it a quick whip. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of milk just to thin it out a bit. And now I've got one egg, tablespoon of milk, a brush, and then I'm going to brush the entire outside of the crust with my egg wash. Okay, now let's finish this off. A little trick I do, I take some of my salt while the egg wash is still a little bit wet and really light guys, not heavy by any means. Just do a little sprinkle of salt around the outside of your crust. Now I want to take some Vito and Joe's extra virgin olive oil and I want to take a drizzle and just slowly drizzle it over the top of your pie. So you're probably using about a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of oil. And then last what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of pepper just a little bit. And I like to get it on the crust. That way people know it's a savory dish. Guys, let's make this really easy. I've got a pan, right, a cookie sheet. And real, real easy, you're just going to take your parchment paper and just gently take your pie with the parchment right on the cookie sheet. Number one, you don't have to touch anything. Number two, it's easy to transfer. Number three, your sheet doesn't get dirty. It's absolutely perfect. Now, I just fold it up a little because you, you get some liquid in there. So I just fold it up just a little to minimize, when possible, any of the fluid from dripping out onto the pan. Just saves on cleanup. My mouth is watering. The aroma in here is delicious. Is ready to go in the oven. Now, a couple of quick tips here. I want that oven hot. So 425, I want to preheat that oven hot. I don't want to put this in until the oven's 425. We're going to go about 15 minutes at 425. And then after 15 minutes, we're going to set that timer. Then we're going to go about 25 to 30 minutes at 375. Make sure it's cooking evenly. Turn it in the in the oven if you have to. Uh, that'll save you from any you know abnormal burns. Another important tip to make this come out mwah, absolutely delizioso is, and I know it's crazy, you subscribe to the channel. I don't know what it is. When you subscribe to Cook in Italian with Joe, everything comes out better. In fact, your life is better. You get notifications, and then you hit that notification bell, any trips, any blogging, anything going on with Cook in Italian with Joe comes right to your notification box. And, and seriously, guys, it really means a lot to me when you subscribe to the channel. And uh, hey, I always think, hey, it makes you part of the Cook in Italian with Joe family. You know what I'm saying? On my olive oil plug, I'm sure you've already gotten it. You already hit the link. It, it's probably, I can literally hear it on its way to your house. All right, let's get cooking. I'm going to go ahead and throw this right in the oven. I'll talk to you guys in about 45 minutes or so. Oh, the aroma in the kitchen. Mm, awesome. Woo. That is hot. Guys, I'm going to let that cool just for a literally like 10, 15 minutes. Then I'm going to plate it. Mm, we're going to eat it. Guys, it's been 15 minutes. That's just cooled down just perfectly. It's at a, like a warm temperature right now. Now I want to plate it. I've got a beautiful plate here from Mackenzie Child, so I'm gonna I'm gonna set it right on that. Easiest way I think to do this is just to transfer your parchment paper first. And then guys, real simple, I'm just gonna transfer that right over to the plate. Guys, it's time to cut into our tomato cheese pie at Mangiata. You know what I'm saying? Got my little spatula here. Just get a nice cut. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Taste time, guys, always my favorite. The crust is just perfect. You can see the cheeses with the fontina the ricotta, and then the mascarpone. My mouth is watering. Look at that. Here you go. Ready? Oh, if I could do it for you. Cook in Italian with Joe. Taste of vision. Smell of vision. Oh, the aroma. First off, you, know, you can smell the butter and the crust, which is just great. The tomato, the garlic comes through, the olive oil. Mm, and then you get the tomato, and, the, and you could smell the cheeses, you know, the aroma of the cheeses. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. The first thing I hit you is the texture. The texture is so velvety. It's it's elegant. And then the crust, it just it's not what I would call crunchy, it's flaky. And it and it just falls apart in your mouth. And Mary's so delicious with the cheeses. The cheeses start to hit you. All those different flavors, a little bit of the garlic. I can't even hit the nutmeg. I don't even get a note of that. But the tomatoes are great. They're sweet. So the sweetness of the tomatoes comes in about halfway through. So good. And I just love the texture. You get that kind of chewiness, gooiness of the fontina, and then the tenderness and the chew, the bite of the, uh, of the crust. I can grab a little bit of that nut bag right now. Mm. Thanks for joining me in such a simple recipe. Now remember, very importante, 
hit that red subscribe rectangular button and the notification bell. Make you part of the Cooking the Challenge with Joe family. You got to hit that description right above or go to my website or my Facebook page, Cooking a Talent with Joe. Click buy it now and grab yourself a bottle of olive oil. Vito and Joe's extra virgin Italian olive oil will drop ship it right to your house. And guys, my last always and most important advice is get around your table a few times a month. You know, spend some time with your family and, and enjoy recipes. Remember, it's not about 30 minutes and over. That's not what this is all about. It's about setting some traditions and celebrating your heritage. I'll tell you those traditions, they'll last you a lifetime. I know they did for me. Guys, from my kitchen to yours, until next week, mwah, bon appetit though.